Blessed Alexandrina Maria de Costa. Alexandrina Maria de Costa was born on 30th of March, 1904, in Balasar, Portugal. She received a solid Christian education from her mother and her sister, de Olinda, and her lively, well-mannered nature made her likable to everyone. Her unusual physical strength and stamina also enabled her to do long hours of heavy farm work in the fields, thus helping the family income. When she was 12, Alexandrina became sick with an infection and nearly died. The consequences of this infection would remain with her as she grew up and would become the first sign of what God was asking of her, to suffer as a victim soul. The Consequences of Sin when Alexandrina was 14, something happened that left a permanent imprint on her, both physically and spiritually. It gave her a face-to-face -face look at the horror and consequences of sin. On Holy Saturday of 1918, while Alexandrina, de Olinda and a young apprentice were busily sewing, three men violently entered their home and attempted to sexually violate them. To preserve her purity, Alexandrina jumped from a window, falling four meters to the ground. Her injuries were many, and the doctors diagnosed her condition as irreversible. It was predicted the paralysis she suffered would only get worse. Until age 19, Alexandrina was still able to drag herself to church where, hunched over, she would remain in prayer, to the great amazement of the parishioners. With her paralysis and pain worsening, however, she was forced to remain immobile, and from 14th of April, 1925 until her death approximately 30 years, she would remain bedridden, completely paralyzed. Alexandrina continued to ask the Blessed Mother for the grace of a miraculous healing, promising to become a missionary if she were healed. Oh Jesus, she would pant, repeating the prayer taught by Our Lady at Fatima, this is for love of thee, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for the offenses against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Despite the fierceness of her pangs, she persevered with her prayerful sacrifice, day after interminable day, month after prolonged month, year after year. Little by little, however, God helped her to see that suffering was her vocation and that she had a special call to be the Lord's victim. The more Alexandrina understood that this was her mission, the more willingly she embraced it. She said, Our Lady has given me an even greater grace, first, abandonment, then, complete conformity to God's will, finally, the thirst for suffering. Mission to Suffer with Christ the desire to suffer continued to grow in her the more her vocation became clear, she understood that she was called to open the eyes of others to the effects of sin, inviting them to conversion, and to offer a living witness of Christ's passion, contributing to the redemption of humanity. She prayed, My good Jesus, you are a prisoner and I am a prisoner. We are both prisoners. You are a prisoner for my welfare and happiness, and I am a prisoner of your hands. You are King and Lord of all, and I am a worm of the earth. I have abandoned you, thinking only of this world which is the destruction of souls. But now, repenting with all my heart, I desire only that which you desire, and to suffer with resignation. O oh my Jesus, I adore Thee everywhere Thou dwellest in the Blessed Sacrament. Where Thou art despised, I stand by Thee. I love Thee for those who do not love. I make amends for those who offend Thee. Come into my heart. And so it was that from 3rd of October, 1938 until 24th of March, 1942, Alexandrina lived the three-hour Passion of Jesus every Friday, having received the mystical grace to live in body and soul Christ's suffering in his final hours. 
During these three hours, her paralysis was overcome, and she would reel of the Stations of the Cross, her movements and gestures accompanied by excruciating physical and spiritual pain. She was also diabolically assaulted and tormented with temptations against the faith and with injuries inflicted on her body. Shortly after the first Mass had been celebrated in her room, she reputedly received a vision of Christ. Here is her account of that memorable occasion. One night Jesus appeared to me in natural dimensions, as if he had just been taken down from the cross. I could see deep, open wounds in his hands, his feet, and his side. The blood streamed from these wounds, and from the breast it came with such force that, after having drenched the garment around his waist, it flooded onto the floor. Jesus drew near to the edge of my bed. With great love I was able to kiss the wounds in his hands and I longed to kiss those in his feet. But due to my paralysis, I was unable to do so. Though I said nothing of this desire to Jesus, he knew what was in my mind and with his hands he held up one foot and then the other and offered them to me to kiss. Enraptured, I contemplated the wounds in his side and the blood that was gushing from it until, filled with compassion, I threw myself into his arms and cried out, O oh my Jesus, how much you have suffered for me. I remained in his arms for some moments and he finally disappeared. This sublime vision left an indelible impression on Alexandrina, even many years later, its memory was so vivid that it still seemed to be visible. Human misunderstanding and incredulity were also a great cross for her, especially when those she most expected would assist her. Members and leaders of the church were adding to her crucifixion. The Lord told her, my daughter, suffering is the key to heaven. I have endured so much to open heaven to all mankind, but for many it was in vain. An investigation conducted by the Curia of Braga resulted in a circular letter written by the Archbishop, which contained a series of prohibitions regarding Alexandrina's case. It was the result of a negative verdict made by a commission of priests. In addition and by way of spiritual comfort, after her spiritual director, a Jesuit priest who had helped her from 1934 to 1941, stopped assisting her, a Salesian priest, Father Umberto Pasquale, came to her aid in 1944. Nourished only by the Eucharist. On 27th of March, 1942, a new phase began for Alexandrina, which would continue for 13 years and 7 months until her death. She received no nourishment of any kind except the Holy Eucharist, at one point weighing as few as 33 kilos, approximately 73 pounds. Medical doctors remained baffled by this phenomenon and began to conduct various tests on Alexandrina, acting in a very cold and hostile way towards her. This increased her suffering and humiliation, but she remembered the words that Jesus himself spoke to her one day, you will very rarely receive consolation. I want that while your heart is filled with suffering, on your lips there is a smile. As a result, those who visited or came into contact with Alexandrina always found a woman who, although in apparent physical discomfort, was always outwardly joyful and smiling, transmitting to all a profound peace. Few understood what she was deeply suffering and how real was her interior desolation. Father Pasquale, who stayed close to Alexandrina throughout these years, ordered Alexandrina's sister to keep a diary of her words and her mystical experiences. In 1944, Alexandrina became a member of the Union of Salesian Cooperators and offered her suffering for the salvation of souls and for the sanctification of youth. She kept a lively interest in the poor as well as in the spiritual health of those who sought out her counsel. Do not offend Jesus anymore. As a testimony to the mission to which God had called her, 
Alexandrina desired the following words written on her tombstone, Sinners, if the dust of my body can be of help to save you, come close, walk over it, kick it around until it disappears. But never sin again, do not offend Jesus anymore. Sinners, how much I want to tell you. Do not risk losing Jesus for all eternity, for he is so good. Enough with sin. Love Jesus, love him. Alexandrina died on 13th of October, 1955. Her last words, I am happy, because I am going to heaven. Father Manuel Casado Neva, the parish priest of Balasar, in the municipality of Varzim, not far from Braga, announced the start of the project which foresees the construction of a Eucharistic sanctuary where Blessed Alexandrina Maria de Costa Salesian Cooperator, mystic of the Eucharist and messenger of the consecration of the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, was born. The Archdiocese of Braga and the Alexandrina de Balasar Foundation want to start building the Eucharistic Sanctuary dedicated to Blessed Alexandrina Maria de Costa. Blessed Alexandrina Maria de Costa, pray for us. Blessed Alexandrina Maria de Costa is the patroness of the A Blessed Call to Love website. Oil dedicated to Blessed Alexandrina Maria de Costa, now available at a Blessed Call to Love.